The girl was in medical school. Like everyone else, she became friends with a fellow student. One day, Nadalyn, that was my friend's name, told me a creepy story that happened to her father many years ago. Her father, as a young man, got a job as a night watchman at the morgue. It wasn't a difficult job, and it paid well. Her father's name is Darty. So, when Darty met the shift worker, he noticed that the man was acting rather strangely. The shifter took Nadalyn's father aside and began to explain some of the rules of working in the morgue. Among them were wearing a cross, no walking in the corridors of the morgue, and making sure to lock yourself in your room after midnight with a padlock and latch. He strongly advised against leaving the room at that time, no matter what happened, but Darty didn't pay much attention to it at the time. The first night Darty worked, some FBI colonel was brought in for an autopsy. His relatives were adamantly opposed to this autopsy. The supervisor told Darty to be careful that night as anything could happen. The evening was quiet and peaceful. As was his custom at 10 hour p.m., Darty bypassed everyone and retired to his gatehouse to watch television. To the man's surprise, his shifter had left a note wishing him good luck and a bottle of whiskey. Darty set aside everything on the table and turned on the television. A little after midnight, the man heard creaks and unexplained rustling in the hallway and went out to look. At the end of the corridor, Darty noticed the silhouette of some person, naturally. At that moment, he thought that it was hooligans and shouted that he was going to call the police. But instead of answering, the silhouette rushed towards the guard. But the unknown man's gait was strange as if he were waddling. Soon, Darty could see that the man was completely naked and blue. At that moment, the man became very frightened, his heart racing, and he ran to the gatehouse. There, Darty locked himself in and berated himself for not listening to the shifter and not taking the keys to the padlock. It turned out that the only means of defense at that point was a small latch on the door. Suddenly, someone started scratching and banging on the door. The man heard an angry groan and hoarse breathing behind the door. The scratching at the door continued until three o'clock in the morning. When they subsided, Darty slowly crept over to the icon hanging on the wall and duct taped it to his chest. Then he pulled out the bottle of whiskey left by the shift attendant and drank nearly half of it in one gulp. The man shook until morning, listening to the eerie gasps and moans coming from behind the door. His replacement came in early in the morning. The man could not dare to open the door for a long time, but then he went out. The supervisor, who arrived at that time, was yelling, because the deed FBI colonel, who had been brought in the day before had green paint under his fingernails, that hadn't been there when he'd been examined yesterday. Darty was in serious trouble. The door to the gatehouse was green and scratched on one side. At that moment, Darty realized who had been under the door that night. After listening to the angry supervisor, the man went to the nearest store and bought five bottles of whiskey to replace it. After this incident, Darty changed a lot. From the unfortunate morgue, he quit. And after a while, Father Nadalin opened his own morgue.